A Corey. How you doing, man? Uh, doing pretty good. Happy to be here. Uh, always happy to have you. Um, I'm so excited. You had a bye week last week. Uh, for a beat reporter, what's a bye week like in the NFL? Work. Just Work trying. To, I'm just. I was just racking my brain trying to figure out different topics to talk about. Um, seeing what other. Honestly, just seeing what other writers talking about and trying to go in a different direction. So you know, I don't make the same. You know, put out the same material. But I was just trying to just pull up stuff because I mean, the team is winless. So. Um, you can only say the same thing so many <laughs> different times in so many different ways. Yeah. Hey, Corey Woods here, everybody. One of the, the, the hardest working men in show business right here. One of the hardest workers here at Wilbur Sports. Real quick. Now, you have some news for us today. Yeah. All right? Would you want to drop it again? You want me to drop it? You want to... Oh, you can drop it. No, no, no. I want you to drop it. It's, it's, About Darren Fells? Yeah. Well, as everybody knows, Darren Fells was, um, re- was released yesterday, went on the waiver wire. Um, he asked for his release Basically, like, um, he asked for release. They gave it to him. I think that they tried to trade him before then, which is why he was a, a healthy scratch against the Eagles. Um, I, th- I, was, I thought that was kind of interesting. But he asked for his release, and he got it yesterday. So I'm curious to see where he's going to land up. I, I didn't see much of him really this season. I mean, it was, it was barely, like, out, barely out there. So my, question, my question, do you, do you think – him requesting for this trade is because they're not playing them or do you think it's some type of issue within the locker room or you think it's just purely based on his skills on the field and that's why they're releasing them um i think for i think for one it was production i mean he was barely being utilized i mean when you saw tight ends out there you and you know catching the ball you mainly saw just tj hawkinson for one Mm -hmm. and then for two i mean if you're on a losing team and you're not getting the ball and you're not even seeing the field i mean hey get me out of here that's that's just my opinion My question, Corey, to you, obviously, I'm not going to bring up, but I have to bring it up because we're still (laughs) looking for your first win uh, covering this team. But you've been (laughs) in three since 2018. (laughs) 18, my bad. Yeah, my first time covering the team was the Monday night football game against the Jets, Matt Patricia's first game. I was a photographer. So so now that you've um, ascended and then you are the beat reporter and stuff like this, you're there all the time. What is it that... We aren't seeing, like, give me some positivity, either player-wise that you've seen in practice. You know, you mentioned, Dan Campbell mentioned uh, Tom Kennedy, the clock would start at. Now, we, a lot of us remember him. Hey, that's a, I know that name. Uh, he was catching passes in, in preseason and stuff right. like this. Is this a guy that you watch in practice that you see can make that step up? Is there anybody that we haven't seen or maybe we haven't seen enough of in your opinion from what you've seen being there all the time. Well, one thing, one person who I talked about during the preseason um, and during training camp was I saw was Jamar Jefferson. I felt that he was not being utilized enough. Now, granted, if you go back and look at his college film, he wasn't that type of guy catching passes out the backfield and whatnot. But I said from what I saw in practice, I could see him in like a Theo Riddick type of role. And he was not getting, he was not activated for a very long time. Something that Deuce Staley talked about because he said, um, Jefferson came to him and you know ma- made his made his issues well known about not being activated. And what happens? Jefferson gets in the game. Um, he does a little something, but I guess he gets also a made a mis- got you know got a touchdown. Made. He also made, apparently made a mistake out there. I didn't catch it, but apparently yeah. made a mistake out there that Staley got, got at him for. But I felt that he was a guy that they should have been utilizing a lot more because if yeah. Jared Goff is going to be doing this, you know, the dinging and dunking and the short yardage passes, I saw the re- the report that you now see him gaining with um, Khalif Raymond and um, Amon Ross St. Brown. I saw yeah. that in, in, in practice in the training camp, and it was just kind yeah. of odd to me that he was not utilized. So that's one guy that I would like to see utilize a lot more if they're going to continue this um, short yardage passing and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I love Jamar Jefferson coming out of college. And to me, he was one of the best zone run scheme guys coming out because he, he's great at reading the line and he's great at planting that foot and getting directly upfield when he has to. And that's exactly what he did on his touchdown run, too. That was kind of like a zone blocking scheme and he was able to find his way in. The, the problem is, a running back's our best position right now, essentially. You have Swift, you know, you have Williams. So it's hard for him to get any run right now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's similar. You, you said, like, in a theoretic kind of uh, ordeal. And you have, I, I would take it back to like when me and Reggie played. And like Theo saw the field a little bit. Then as he continued to get better and better, he started to see the field a little bit more. Um, the thing is this Jefferson has to be patient. He's a rookie. Yeah. All right, you're a rookie. You have, to, you have to pay your dues. 
Right, but you like that he's demanding playing time, though, no, without being no, a detriment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think. I, no, no, I think well, the thing is this. It depends how he went to do Sage right. about it. Yeah. Listen, Coach, I just want to know why I'm not playing. What what do I need to do to get better? And the thing is this. When say to gets on him about a simple mistake, it's, it could have been, been a blocking assignment. Mm-hmm. It could have been a chip trying to get out. You don't know what it might have been. You have to know the position to be able to, to identify what Ducey was, was yelling at him about. And it could, be, it could have been something that they went over in practice. Yeah. It could have been a screen. It could have been a screen pass. And a blitz came. And instead of you running through the blitz to get open, you went into the line. Because that's what you usually do when there's no blitz. But when you see the blitz coming, you got to run into the blitz like you're about to block it right. and shut up. And I remember as a rookie, I made that mistake in preseason. And Coach Coach Curtis Mocken chewed me out about it, <laughs> and it never happened again. And the thing is, in the NFL, you can make a mistake, right? You can make a mistake. You can't make it twice. Yeah. Okay. And that's in a lot of you that's can't make the same mistake twice. That's, that's in, in life. Every, so that's, <laughs> here's a to your point to what Corey said: the fact that he went and he got activated, he did it the right way. Right, it, because reason, you know, it, but it, what that's I'm saying—that's not, not why he got activated. He, no, 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 I understand hurt, right. that, Joy, but the problem, is, which what Corey said, right? When a rookie player does that, it can only go one way badly if he doesn't do it the right way. He obviously yeah. did it the right way, yeah, I, but I, the fact that what Drew Staley's going to get on, it could be something that they talked about. That's something to as small as as if I turn. The right way, right? But if I don't present myself and open up for the pass from Lindstrom, right? If I turn my back, I'm going to get in trouble. Some little subtle thing that Deuce Staley probably told him a million times or something that he had to switch the way that he did things so that he'll end up like that. But what I'm saying is that it doesn't ever happen to the fact that, that a guy will get activated or whatever else. By not doing it the right way, especially a rookie. Yeah, he would have got buried yeah. if he no, went in there no, and demanded and stuff. No, he's not. He's just, you know we drafted him, which he was a seventh round draft pick. We usually when you get drafted anywhere past the fifth round, you just don't want to get drafted, so you can choose what team you can yeah. go to, right? But he came here. It was a good. It was, he's in a good situation. He's with. Uh, he's on a team to where. Uh, in the past, you have running backs that have been known to have be somewhere injury prone. Yeah. And so at some point in time, you know you're going to get caught up. Just wait your time. It's going to happen. Be patient. But when you're on a team that's not winning, right, you're on a team that's not winning, we're 0-8, uh, and I'm sitting on the bench. Now i got to go home to my girlfriend or my parents, and they're like, why aren't you playing? They're losing. What, <laughs> what's and up? That's, that's, and that's, 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 that's kind of what I was getting at, like, you know, like, okay, look, they're winless. Why not start turning over every stone and seeing, okay. Because because that? right now, like you said, the run game is our best position. And mm-hmm. in, in, in give and take, the O line might be our best might unit. You, it might be, be our best unit. unit yep. Right. But you know, when you have two of your best O linemen down and then your other O linemen playing you know, playing through a, a, a I don't want to call it an injury, but playing hurt. It's tough to get that run game going. So, what would, you, what would your advice be to a Jamar Jefferson in this situation that he's in right now? I, I think he's doing everything the right way. Just go out there when you get the opportunity. Just you don't have to like the, they see you in practice. They know what you can do, right? They know what you can do. Just wait your time. You know the injury rate in the NFL is ninety nine point nine 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 nine. Especially it's, at the running back position. A, in the running back position, it's a hundred percent. You know, hundred percent chance that somebody's going to be injured. So when you get hurt. Or a running back gets hurt, just know that you're going to be the first person they bring up. And don't fumble. <laughs> when you get that opportunity, <laughs> don't fumble. Right, because that's the thing that can happen. Say he right. goes out there to the coach and he's, he's, I want to put me in right now and I'm ready. Like, why? I don't know how the conversation went. So yeah. I don't know, right? I will say, but, that, oh, not to cut you off, but I will say that from the way that Deuce Staley talked about the conversation, Deuce Staley, if, if, if it came off as if he was okay with how. Um, Jefferson came okay. to him. It, right. was more, so, it, came, it was more of a The thing is this, though. Now you get called up, right? Now you get called up, and you go out there, and he did well. But say something else happened, and they get down there, and they fumble. And you ask me to put you in here, and you go out there and do that. Like, the thing is, the best thing to do in this type of situation, just sit back, evaluate, continue to learn the game. When you get in, never look back. Yeah, Never look back. That's I love it. Does, uh, my question to you, Jork, does the fact that a lot of these fringe guys, whether you're wide receiver, tight end, running back, or defensive back, special teams, if you're a special teams guy, that helps you get, right? That's the, and that's the thing, right? Play special teams, you know, make an impact there, and eventually if you're doing well there, they're going to keep you on the team, and, and, and as long as you can stay on the team, 
you're going to get a shot eventually. I didn't get my first NFL carry, guys, until my third year in the NFL. Oof. How was my that third week? Year, right? And you got to think, I, I led the NFL in preseason in Russia. When I was on the Saints, I tore my – I tore my PCL on the very first preseason game, projected to be out six to eight weeks, set out one week, came back, and led the whole team in rushing and receiving. Gorilla! You know, <laughs> and led the team, led the whole <laughs> Saints team in preseason in rushing and receiving, and came back, made the team with five, with four other running backs, five running backs on the roster, and they didn't even want to, they didn't even think I was going to make the team. I had to rehab my lead. They cut me, and I had to wait until the last game of the season to get a call from the Lions, and I came here, and I was on practice squad. Um, no, no, actually, I was on the roster. Then the following year is when I started. I had my first training camp with the Lions, and then from there, I, I, the first game I got one carry. The next game I got a couple more, and I had to gradually work my way up. Next it, thing you know, we're all doing this. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> almost every game. You see, hey. yeah, right? I point, hey. point to it up there, and I point to it back. At, like point to it. Like, you see it on there. Yeah. Yeah. You, see it, you see it on there. You're talking to the people. Yeah, but but that's being patient and just waiting. I didn't have to say, you know, put me in. I just went out there, performed, and the 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 more you do with those chances, you'll get more chances and more chances, and then all of a sudden. So, Corey, um, how have the tone of the press conference has been compared to the beginning of the season when it was biting kneecaps, we all got the energy, this is going to be the best year ever, we're growing something here, we got things, our mojo's working, now we're Please 0 Please sleep on us. Please. Um, that, that yeah, that – um. No, that's that, what they said. Like, sleep on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sleep yeah on. I remember Jamal Williams did yeah. say that. Um, no I, would say, I would say the tone of the press conferences right now has been kind of just – I don't know. I don't know the, the right word to describe it, honestly. It's been, it's been kind of just like, meh? I don't know if that's the way to describe it. It's because right now they're, they, they're winless. I mean, I don't know. What I, they're winless. So it's like, you know, and the thing is, you don't know when that first win is going to come. There's some of the questions are starting to sound kind of same. Feels how would it, how would it mean? Right. What would it mean to get the first win? Uh, um, that's why that Tucker field goal what, was so what, big. What's keeping you motivated? Um, who are you getting? Who are you getting advice from? It's been pretty much the same question. So mm. I would say, you know what? The tone of the press conferences has been Groundhog Day. There we go. There All you right. go. It is crazy when you look up the Lions' schedule and it's just L L L L L L L all the way down, like, and it's like, you know, Holy I blame hell, it on nine weeks you know in, and we haven't won a game. You know, I blame that on, man. I blame, blame it on. It I, on I blame it on the hats that they came out with the big L. On the L hats. The, the L hats that fish wanted. Fish wanted that. that. Yeah. Yeah. You still want that hat, fish? It was a jinx. God, yeah, I still want that hat. <laughs> they still have it. Yeah, Again, I, mean, I don't wear hats, so I prefer like a shirt. But if they had a shirt with the L on it, oh God, I'd wear it in two seconds. We'd have regardless, to regardless, boys. Regardless, we know that's just, that's the type of mentality that keeps us in the state that we're in um, as a team right now. That please do not listen to Fitz. Do not wear a <laughs> hat with the L on it. Because it's for right, Lions. What else is it for? A, a L, a loss. Loss. Okay. Well, they're the Detroit Lions. I'm sorry, the name has an L in it. 